I am really excited today to um, welcome Aisha Yusufai from the uh, Department of Global Health and Population at the Harvard uh, School of Public Health. Um, and we are really fortunate to have you here virtually, Aisha. I, um, she's going to be speaking to us at our final SEBI seminar of this um, uh, this term. And Aisha completed her doctoral degree at the Institute of Child Health at the University of College London, which has a focus on international child health, nutrition, and development. Her research has focused on understanding integrated early childhood interventions. She has 20 years of field research experience in low and middle income countries, having lived and worked in South Asia and East Africa, and led program evaluations in Central and Eastern Europe. The goal of her research is to promote early childhood development and to support the capacity in order to develop evaluate and improve early childhood interventions. Dr. Yusuf I also serves on a number of global advisory groups on EC early child development for agencies such as UNICEF, the World Health Organization, and the World Bank. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Aisha. She'll, she'll give a presentation and then there'll be opportunity to interact with questions afterwards. Um, over to you and thank you very much. Thanks, Jamie. Um, it's a real pleasure to be able to join you all at the seminar series. So I'll just start by putting up my slides. So um, for today's seminar, I'm going to focus on a program that I've been involved in um, for several years now called LEAPS, which is Youth Leaders for Early Childhood, Assuring Children Are Prepared for School. Um, LEAPS was intended as a two-generation approach for supporting both young children's development and for youth development. And the motivation for this came from when I was working in Pakistan on early parenting and recognizing that just under 25% of the, the children that I was working with in this particular district had any access um, to either formal or informal early childhood care and education support as they started their preschool years. So that was really the motivation that started me exploring um, this line of research um, and this line of program work. So before I get going, um, I want to acknowledge that the LEAPS program has multiple partners. First and foremost, the National Commission for Human Development, which is a government agency in Pakistan that is regulated by the Ministry of Education, as well as our technical partners, the Institute um, that I was formerly working in, the Aga Khan University in Pakistan, the Yale Child Study Center, and the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute, as well as recognize and acknowledge the funding that we receive from both Dubai Cares and Grand Challenges Canada. So in this talk, I'll start by providing some context for um, early childhood care and education, as well as for youth development in Pakistan, um, basically um, helping set the scene for why we approach the design of the LEAPS program as we did. I'll then describe the intervention as well as the evaluation and start to discuss some of our preliminary findings, although in the interest of full transparency, we are still digging through um, much of the data, um, but I hope that we were able to provide a snapshot today. So in terms of the context for early childhood care and education, um, globally, about 38% of children in the majority world have access to an early childhood care and education program. That may be a formal program or it may be an informal community based program. Um, and we know that there were disparities before the pandemic, and the pandemic has certainly compounded, has certainly exacerbated. Um, the number of children that have access to services, and also these disruptions have led to an estimation of an increase in the number of children off track in their developmental potential in the first five years of life, which was already at 250 million globally and is now estimated to have been increased by another close to 11 million. 
At the same time, we know that along the life course, there are other important sensitive windows of opportunity for development, and youth is another example. Here we know that from the Lancet Commission that there is an estimated 500 million youth who are unemployed or underemployed or have insecure jobs and approximately 30% in the age group between 15 and 29 years in the majority world who are not enrolled in either an education program, an employment program, or a training program. Um, and of course, there are disparities there between genders and whether you live in a rural or urban area. And so these are could be seen in terms of a policy direction as competing priorities. Do you invest in early childhood? Do you invest in adolescence? Do you invest in youth? And these are some of the things that are very real decisions policymakers are grappling with. Oops. So given that we have along the life course, these sensitive windows of opportunity for intervention to promote development, both in the early childhood period, as well as in the um, late adolescence and youth period, um, we know that good quality interventions that have appropriate coverage can reduce inequalities um, in populations. So turning first to the early childhood period, we know that there's a need for investment in interventions, not only in those first crucial thousand days of life, which establishes the foundation for healthy developments along the life course, but also in the next 1000 days, the preschool period between two to five years of age, which contributes to bolstering those early benefits we receive if we have access to nurturing care in the early part of life. One of these key interventions that is critical for this age group is early childhood care and education, which is a real pathway to supporting early academic gains as well as social emotional development and is a driver for later success in terms of academic attainment. However, Pakistan is among the countries which has very low early childhood care and education or ECCE enrollment. And that's compounded by a number of issues, including poor quality for those that do have access, as well as um, inadequately trained and prepared workforce to deliver on early childhood. Um, there is both, I would say, a supply side set of issues as well as a demand side of, set of issues where value and understanding around the early childhood care and education space um, needs to be promoted in the country. And this illustrates um, the, the data that's available. It's from the Pakistan Social and Lifestyle Measurement Survey. Um, which shows that the average is 19% of children between three and five years of age who are enrolled in some kind of early childhood center-based care um, in this age group. And there's variation across the country. Um, we also know that where these services are operationalized, these tend to be multi-age classrooms. So you can have anyone from age three to age eight. So both very early enrollment and very late enrollment is an issue. Um, as I've already said, quality is an issue and a lack of an adequately trained workforce is an issue in ensuring that if children do have access, they are able to actually learn and to have healthy development in that environment. And of course, there are inequalities that are seen across wealth groups between rural and urban populations um, by disability status, as well as a smaller um, inequality that's seen between boys and girls in this age group. Um, I would say that overall, we are failing young children, um, irrespective of which group you are belonging to, given the very low rates of access there are in the country to this service. 
Simultaneously, we also know that we have challenges in investment in youth development. We know that this period um, of late adolescence and youth is significant for both intellectual and social emotional maturity for a growth in our executive functioning skills. And yet we know that less than one in five young people globally um, are having access to employment opportunities, education opportunities or training opportunities. In Pakistan specifically, we see that there are very clear gender disparities um, where whether you look at education, employment or labor force participation rates, these are poorer for female participation as shown in these orange bars. And so in summary, what we would like is to see whether we can leverage a cross-generation or two-generation approach to bolster development for both young children as well as simultaneously support youth. So both of these periods are periods of spurts of executive functioning growth. And we know that for young children, executive functioning skills are thought to develop through the interactions with the adults who model strong executive functioning skills. And so we recognize that by promoting these skills among the adults that care for young children, we have an opportunity to further bolster and develop these skills in young children. And that is one of the things that we wanted to test um, through the LEAPS evaluation. In terms of um, the policy context, there is a window of opportunity that has emerged in Pakistan over the last few years. There is growing policy attention to supporting early childhood care and education across all the provinces and interest in the federal level. So as early as 2009, there was a national education policy, early learning development standards have been developed, and more recently, there's been an update of the National Early Childhood Education Curriculum and the provinces themselves, because education is devolved, have also taken um, up this mantra and um, started developing early childhood care and education um, curriculums, including SIN, the province in which I work. Um, and there are a number of agencies, including the Aga Khan Development Network, as well as UNICEF, who work closely with the Ministry of Education to support these policy efforts. Um, and up until the most recent change in government, there was a growth and an interest and an investment in youth development, including programs like Gamyab Javan, which was specifically directed to invest in bolster um, vocational training and uh, business opportunities for young people in the country. So in designing LEAPS, we looked at how we were going to align some of the elements of this life course approach to learning and development with the sustainable development goals and really targeting goals and targets across quality education, specifically for young children, for decent work and economic growth opportunities for youth, as well as gender equality, as well as trying to bolster that workforce development, which we know is a barrier in providing both access and quality to early childhood services in the country. So in summary, um, in terms of the challenge, there are innovations needed in the country to accelerate access to high quality ECCE programming for young children, as well as employment and training opportunities for youth, and particularly being responsive to female youth. There is also an attention that's needed to address these inequalities um, that we see in development opportunities across the country. There are policy provisions in place that provide us with a window of opportunity to intervene, as well as global commitments and targets that the country um, is aiming to achieve. And so for us, a way forward was LEAPS, which was designed as this two generational investment in youth and young children. It was designed to be both gender responsive in its approach to reducing gender inequalities in education and workforce participation, and designed to reach communities both where there was the highest need for young children, as well as the highest need for female youth to have access to opportunities. 
So given that context, I'll now explain and describe in a little more detail what the LEAPS program looks like. So LEAPS um, was conceptualized as this response to education and training needs for both children and youth in southern Pakistan in the province of Sindh. Um, and we basically are recruiting female youth participants, which we refer to as community youth leaders, between the ages of 18 and 24 years of age. And they are trained um, through a vocational training program by um, to deliver on early childhood care and education programs for young children between three and five years of age who are in villages in communities where there is no other formal access to preschool education and even where primary school education has been provided not by the Ministry of Education but by um, other agencies. And so the LEAPS program has two aims. The first is to improve children's school readiness um, and ensure that they have a smooth transition and a successful transition from preschool to primary school. And the second aim is to promote the youth leaders' personal and professional development, as well as their economic growth and empowerment. And this is um, a figure that describes the, the program implementation. We have a recruitment process um, through which we um, train female community youth leaders um, in the identified villages. They first receive a two week basic vocational training and this is followed by a twice monthly on the job coaching and support that um, runs across the academic year. Um, they are then able to implement and deliver an informal community-based preschool in their village um, with the goal to promote both academic skills as well as social emotional skills for young children and support healthy development. And these um, centers are run for three hours every day, six days a week from Monday to Saturday in a community donated um, classroom space. And there is great variation in what that community space looks like. So some of these spaces may actually be purpose designed classrooms that are unused, um, basically primary school centers that are not functioning at the given time. They may be um, located in spaces in people's homes or they may be in community spaces that have been donated either by the district government or by um, village leaders. Um, and then we also support as the children succeed in completing their preschool years, a transition to primary school. So we're aiming for both on time enrollment and we're aiming to support the primary school teacher to support young children as they transition from a preschool, very much a child centered approach to the primary school approach that is taught locally. Um, and we have transition workshops for this, as well as orientation days for both the primary school teacher, the preschool teacher, the families, as well as the young children themselves. Um, our implementing partner is the National Commission for Human Development. And as I mentioned, they um, are regulated by the Ministry of Education. Basically, their mission is to work in some of the hardest to reach areas in the rural parts of the country, serving the most vulnerable populations, providing um, services in both health and education, where the Ministry of Health or Ministry of Education have been unable to optimally provide those services. They have a proven track record in putting in community-based infrastructure for education services and for training services, as well as experience in delivering both feeder primary education, where the Ministry of Education has been unable to run a primary school in a village, as well as providing youth vocational training programs. Although there have been challenges in whether those training programs have necessarily been responsive to creating real economic opportunities for those that they target. So they tend to be things like um, tailoring, sewing classes, which may not necessarily generate an adequate income. 
Um, so back in 2015 to 2016, when we first designed LEAPS, we first conducted a pilot study. And this was also a randomized control trial across 10 villages over one academic year in one district um, in Sindh, which was Nushero Faroz. And the goal of this was really proof of concept. Can youth deliver early childhood care and education services? Are there benefits to young children? Um, and is there is an opportunity to scale this up? So by the end of that pilot, we found that there were benefits to children's school readiness, as well as their executive functioning skills. And we had qualitative data to support that there were some benefits to youth who were delivering this service in terms of both personal growth as well as professional growth, as well as changes only measured pre and post um, in terms of the community youth leaders executive functioning skills. But we use the lessons learned from this pilot to help us really design and strengthen the curriculum, both for youth training as well as for young children um, for our larger scale um, evaluation. So the LEAPS transition to scale was implemented in 2018 to 2021. Um, and it was disrupted obviously by the pandemic and I'll come to that as we go through some of our findings. Um, but we aim to reach uh, 99 villages in four districts in Sindh, in Dadu, Kherbur, Nushero Feroz and Sakar. And these were all in villages that were being served through the National Commission for Human Development or the NCHDs feeder primary education service, um, which just as a reminder was basically the NCHD running primary schools on behalf of the Ministry of Education when the Ministry of Education could not provide a functioning building or a salaried teacher. So the aim um, for this larger scale evaluation was to look at the impact of LEAPS on both children's school readiness outcomes as well as female youth development, and also to have a better understanding of the implementation process in terms of fidelity, quality, and costs. And today I'll focus more on some of our early findings for AIM-1. Um, a cluster was a village um, level, and the inclusion criteria for the cluster was having an NCHD feeder primary school in the village, it had to be in one of these four districts, and we identified 119 eligible clusters. Um, we implemented a cluster randomized step wedge design um, for our trial. We used three steps, um, rolling out 33 clusters at a time every nine months or so. And the trial was implemented um, between December 2018 and June 2021. Um, we had four rounds of population surveys um, at the cluster level. So um, in each cluster, we were sampling 11 children between four and five, 4.5 and 5.5 years of age, as well as their primary caregiver. Um, in terms of assessing the impact of LEAPS across four time points um, at baseline and then before the start of step two and step three and then at end line. And then for the youth participants, they were hired um, again, if they lived in the village, if they were nominated by their community and if they had been successful in our recruitment workshops. Um, we also had some comparison community youth leaders and they all can speak to some of the challenges in identifying meaningful comparison youth leaders um, for this evaluation design. But we had about 99 community youth leaders and 198 um, youth comparisons. Our primary outcome for children was school readiness as scored by the IDELA, which is the um, development scales for early learning developed by Save the Children. And we had secondary outcomes of children's executive functioning, as well as for youth outcomes, their personal and professional development, which included confidence, efficacy, autonomy, social connectedness, executive functions, and depressive symptoms. 
So moving on into some of our first set of findings. Um, this is a flow chart of our um, trial. So on the left, you can see when our population survey rounds took place. So we had one at baseline and then round one, um, round two and, round, and end line. And it was really at round two or step three where the pandemic took hold and we had quite substantial um, lockdowns, which meant that the schools were also shut down as well as disruption to the research activities. Um, but we were still able to roll out eventually three steps um, um, across the, the, the evaluation. In terms of the eligibility um, from those 119 identified eligible clusters, 20 were excluded because either they were unsafe areas or we were unable to identify a community youth leader which had who had met the minimum kind of requirements that we had for education and competencies, um, as well as um, support by the community, um, or because there was no space available to be able to implement a preschool. So this just is a summary of the baseline characteristics and Generally, overall and across steps, we didn't see too much of a difference in terms of um, the number of children available, in terms of gender, their age, in terms of primary caregiver characteristics, um, including maternal education, her occupation, and household food security, just to illustrate a few of the baseline characteristics that we looked at. But generally, this is a disadvantaged area. Um, where the majority of mothers um, have no formal education. On average, if we look at primary school grades completed, it's about two primary school grades. And the majority of women um, do not work outside of the home. They may have contributed to, of course, the family um, income through um, working in, in on the rural lands on farm and in agriculture, but often this is unrecognized and informal. In terms of the program coverage, excluding um, our first baseline, where we had nobody enrolled um, in the LEAP schools, in round one, about 76% of the eligible um, um, young children were enrolled in a LEAP school. In round two, um, which was when the pandemic hit, um, this was stopped, decreased to 59%. And then by end line, it was coming back up to 71% um, again. So in terms of our primary and secondary outcomes, um, when we looked at this by end line, um, we could see that we had a small to modest impact on the primary outcome, which was our IDELA score of school readiness of a 0.3. We also saw significant impacts in terms of numeracy, literacy, and social emotional scores, although no impact on motor development. And in terms of executive functioning, we saw some change based on the um, cognitive flexibility score, um, which was measured by the dimensional change card sort activity, um, but not in other executive functioning skills um, that we measured. Um, just as a snapshot from the population route survey rounds that we did across those four time points, you can see here that before schools were um, enrolled into the intervention um, arm, um, they generally, um, we saw lower school readiness scores shown in that orange line compared with the blue line for the um, communities where the, the LEAPS preschool had rolled out. But you can quite clearly see a dip in the score um, during the COVID-19 shutdown period as well. Um, we did do a per protocol um, sensitivity analysis as well, comparing, um, this should say round one, sorry, com um, comparing the two rounds that were um, before the pandemic 
and then during the pandemic. And you can see that there are higher um, effect scores during before the pandemic. Um, and so you can see that there was an impact in that pandemic affected um, step and round population survey round. So how does this fit with what else we see in the um, global data on early childhood care and education? We know that on average, in terms of cognitive development scores, they tend to be quite high scores of 0.67 um, and lower for psychosocial development of about 0.23. And these have been on meta-analyses that have combined both formal and non-formal community-based preschools. LEAPS would um, be in that latter um, of non-formal and community-based preschools. Um, which tend to have lower impact sizes. Um, but there is heterogeneity, and that heterogeneity is based not only on the coverage and the duration of the program, but also on the quality of those programs that has been explored a lot in this literature. Moving on to the youth leaders, um, we are still unpacking the quantitative data, but we did do a mixed method study to understand the effects of being a youth leader um, as in this program, um, both in terms of the outcomes I described, but in terms of also both in terms of quantitative and qualitative data. And so what this slide gives is just a snapshot of at least what some of the qualitative data um, we're starting to see around youth, which includes um, benefits to their skills and their learning development, their emotional regulation, their sense of social networks, their confidence, um, their aspirations for their own future, the support for their own children and for their own families, as well as the financial benefits and the change in their recognition and respect within the community. And so we have several quotes, quotes um, which support some of these findings. And I'll just leave you to, to look at those briefly. Okay. So in summary, LEAPS had st statistically significant small to medium sized effects on children's school readiness and a benefit to a cognitive flexibility. It did not have significant effects on children's gross motor skills, on executive functioning skills for either working memory or inhibitory control. So far, our qualitative analysis has started um, to show some benefits to CYL or community youth leader participants across aspects of both their personal and their professional development. And we are continuing to analyze um, the youth data as well as classroom quality data and the implementation and cost data. But in terms of implications, we feel that LEAPS is a successful, was successful in promoting children's school readiness for young children. It has promising results for benefits for youth and their professional growth, as well as their personal development. Um, we also recognize that there is support um, for cross-generational or two-generational approaches to ECCE in a country the size of Pakistan with as low enrollment in early childhood care and education, it's going to take multiple um, innovations and multiple opportunities and platforms for children to have access, um, which will all need to be supported and regulated by the Ministry of Education. Um, so this is one of those potential solutions, um, given the complexity of Pakistan. We also see this as an opportunity for expanding training and employment opportunities for female um, youth. Um, and I'd like to just end by acknowledging the very uh, large number of investigators and colleagues that have been involved across the institutions um, for the LEAP so far as we continue um, on this journey, as well as the community youth leaders, the young children and the families themselves. Thank you.